ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر الا نفسه اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا خُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه أمينا. I have just recited to you verses 101 to 103 of Surah Al-Al Imran. These are very profound verses of the Quran. You can give them a title together. You can give these three verses a title of a three-point agenda for the Muslim Ummah. Basically, these three verses give the Muslim community, the Ummah, a three-point agenda to follow. Uh, it has both internal and external uh, agendas. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the khitab or starts the oration. By the way, Quran is an oration of Allah. It's khitab, it's kalamullah. The style of Quran, you know, the style of Quran, the style the, is the khitab style, is the style of a sermon. It's not the style of writing a book. You see, when you write a book, you write chapter one, you make point one. Then you make your points for why you're making point one your point. And then at the end of the chapter one, you have your conclusion. This is my conclusion. Then chapter two, you make a different point. Then chapter three, maybe you say, okay, look at what we discussed in chapter one and what we discussed in chapter two. The conclusion of these two points is this. Or you have a new point in chapter three. But either way, you write each chapter is a point. This is not how the Quran is. The Quran, you can say, can be very well understood, in fact, by the State of the Union address that's done by the presidents of the United States every year. The president is talking to many different groups. Sometimes he's talking to one particular group. Sometimes he's talking to, uh, regarding, for example, Obama health care. But he doesn't have to say that. You already know he's talking about that group of people. Then maybe he's talking about the, the economy. But it doesn't need to be said who he's talking to. It's understood that as the president is talking to different groups, who those different groups are within his kitab, it's understood, oh, these are the addresses. Just like this, when the companions of the Qur'an, they were hearing the Qur'an, they knew who the, oh, this is referring to this group of people. And these are the addressees, and these are the addressees. So it was already understood. And this is why the style of Qur'an is a style of oration. And what happens in an oration? The beginning and the end has to be very powerful. When you give an oration, the beginning of your khitab has to be powerful. And the end of your khitab has to be powerful. And in the middle is the themes that you want to bring up. So the Qur'an is the same way. All the surahs, they have a very strong beginning, very strong end, 
And in the middle is the discussion that Quran wants to have with the different groups. And this is one of the amazing things of the Quran. And it's the only holy scripture of the world that does this. The Quran is talking to everyone. At one time it's talking to Christians. Another time it's talking to Jews. At another it's talk a time it's talking to the Muslims. At another time it's talking to the people who deny Allah. And at another time the Quran is saying, look at my universe. Look at my creation. And then it's saying, look at you, look at history, right? So when you're reading the Qur'an, and if you're in, especially with that rhythm, right? The Qur'an has that rhythm, and you're zoned into that rhythm, and then the Qur'an's taking you on a journey, look at that, look at that, look at history, look at the people, look at what they're doing. Then it's having a logical conversation with the Christians and the Jewish community, and then with the Quraysh, who are the pagans. And this rhythm with this very logical, harmonious argument, what happens is you go on like a miraj, okay? And then you come back at the end of the surah. Because it's, it's like literally being on a ride. Because the Quran is never, it's the only book that does this, that where it is in discussion with everyone. And you have to figure out by studying Quran, who is the Quran talking to? What were the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet understanding? Anyway, today I have recited to you three verses of Sutul al Imran that are very easy to understand. So it is a three-point agenda, starting with yourself and then going to the community and, uh, and then a logical conclusion from that. And uh, you will see what these three-point agendas in the Quran, how they are uh, wholesome in, their, in, in, in what they're giving to the community. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you people who believe. Now, Ya lil ba'id wa qareeb. Ayyu hiya lil qareeb. This is why Quran says, Ya ayyu haldabina amu. Okay? This is just as a grammatical point. So, Ya ayyu haldabina amu. Ittakullaha haqqa tuqadi. Have taqwa of Allah. Taqwa has been translated many different ways. I'm going to give you maybe a few. But then you already have heard a lot about having taqwa of Allah, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But you know all the du'a, you all know the du'a that's very popular. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَاقِنَا عَذَابًا This word, waqina, عَذَابَ النَّارِ Save us from the hellfire. وَقَعَا اِتَّقَى means the same thing, it's the same root. اِتَّقَى means to save yourself. To save yourself. So at the very minimum it means to protect yourself, to save yourself from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the higher level, it means to be mindful of Allah, to be conscious of Allah, to be aware of Allah at all times, and to know that if you do something wrong, Allah is not unaware of it, there will be consequences, whether in this life or the next life. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhilladhina amanu, O you people who believe, ittaqullaha, have taqwa of Allah, haqqa tuqatihi, as it deserves that you should be mindful of Allah. Now to be mindful of Allah, you have to know who Allah is, and really feel it, and be emotional about it, and to be able to ponder over the heavens and the earth and see, okay, this is not a joke, we're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارَ what, what is wrong with you that you don't return to Allah the respect that He deserves? In another place, ma qadrullah qadri. They didn't. You can't value the value of Allah. It's impossible. You can't give value. Qadr means also value. Qadr also means to measure. Laylatul Qadr, for example, you all know the term Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr usually translated the night of power, the night of Qadr. But it, one of its greatest meanings actually is the night of value. But I won't go into that right now. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna And do not die except as Muslims. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Meaning you have completely surrendered yourself to Allah. Allah is saying make sure that before you pass away that you have surrendered yourself emotionally, intellectually, physically, uh, in terms of your time, your wealth, you have surrendered it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first thing, most obvious thing that's being said. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. There are some more things that I would like to mention very quickly, but this may not be things that everyone can relate to. Usually it is considered that iman, a Muslim, 
and then mu'min. You surrender Islam, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and then you become mu'min. But sometimes in the Quran it's the opposite. It starts with mu'min, ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. And then it's saying, wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. In the same way, the word Muslim, Mi'lata abikum Ibrahim wa sallatum muslimin. The word Muslim in the same way is used for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, a higher level than Iman. Because if you have Iman, it doesn't mean you're doing the actions. So in, in a sense, Iman is lower than Muslim, but in another sense, the word Muslim is higher than Iman. But that's a separate issue. Now, when the Prophet was in Mecca, you know, he was doing his street preaching, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was, he spent 12 years uh, preaching in the streets with very little results. But the reaction against him, the propaganda against him was great. And uh, he decided that he should start another base, he should try another base, try another place as his base. So he went to Ta'if, we all know what happened there. Then during the Hajj season, you know, all of the Arabs, they used to come to Mecca. So then the Prophet ﷺ, now he was looking for a new base. After 10 years of being in Mecca, he needed a new base because Mecca wasn't working out. So in the Hajj season, when the people used to come, he and Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr was an expert in genealogy. And so Abu Bakr used to tell the Prophet, okay, these people are with such and such tribe and they are with such and such. And so the Abu Bakr and the Prophet used to target specifically tribes that were powerful. Tribes that could actually carry on the message of Islam. And there are many stories regarding this. I can't go into that yet. But of course, we know one of the tribes of Yathrib, they accepted Islam. And now, when they accepted Islam, the first time, it was the first year, it was 12 people. And the Prophet, so now when they went back, first year it was six people. Actually, the Bayat al Aqaba took place twice. So six people went back, and the next year they brought 12 people. But this time they said to the Prophet, you know, can you send with us somebody who's going to teach us? Can you send with us somebody who's going to, you know, we're only 12 people, and we can go there and really, like, tell them about Islam. So the Prophet could have sent Abu Bakr, Omar, Hamza, some of the great companions. Ali could have been sent. Uthman could have been sent. Ammar bin Yasir could have been sent, but the Prophet ﷺ sent that companion of his who was an expert in reading and teaching Qur'an. He used to be called Maqri, the one who recites. So these 12 people, they went back, and Musa bin Umar, this companion that the Prophet sent, he Wherever he was going now, you know, it's his full-time duty to teach the people of Medina about Islam, so they'll accept Islam. So wherever he's going, he's reading the Qur'an, and he, they, they're Arabs, they directly have the impact of the Qur'an. So within a year, what happens? From 12 people, the next year now, 72 people come from Hajj. So they come, and they say, we're 72 have come here, there are hundreds more back home, O Prophet of Allah, you come with us, we're going to support you. And this is how the story, and there's a whole story, I can't because I don't have time right now, of what he actually did and which tri tribal leaders, for example, I'll just tell you one da'wah trick from Musa bin Umair. Musa bin Umair used to say to the tribal leaders, listen to what I have to say. If you like what I have to say, you can accept it. If you don't like what I have to say, you don't have to accept it. You're not obligated to accept what I say. But it doesn't hurt you to listen to what I have to say. So they would say, it seems like a reasonable proposition. And so Musa bin Umar radiallahu he would read the Quran. They would be affected by it. They would want to know more questions. He would answer their questions. And lo and behold, some of the great leaders of Yathrib, they accepted Islam. So now, this event that took place, that these people in Yathrib, who were enemies of one another. There are five Jewish tribes in that area as a whole, five Jewish tribes. There's Aus and Khazraj, and the Aus and Khazraj, they're enemies of one another. But now here's a situation that some of the people of Aus have accepted Islam, some of the people of Khazraj have accepted Islam, 
Not, nothing on record of any of the Jewish people yet accepting Islam at this phase. But these people that were enemies for now many, many years, they have now accepted Islam. So about this, the Quran makes a, the Quran alludes to a few, or ex, uh, expose, uh, says the following. First, like I already mentioned, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاطِهِ وَلَا تَمُوْتُنَّا إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Second, now it is telling the Sahaba, reflect upon that time where you used to be enemies and now you have become brothers. So the Qur'an starts with وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Hold on to the rope of Allah. And the Prophet says, هُوَ حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ The rope of Allah is the Qur'an. The end, one end is in your hand. And the other end is in Allah's hand. This Quran is the rope of Allah. So the wa'atasimu, and by the way, this is Fair al-Amr. Wa'atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an. All of you together as a community, as a whole, hold on to the rope of Allah. Not just individually, but as a community, hold on to the rope of Allah. Wa'atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an. All of you together hold on to the rope of Allah. Wa'adhkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Remember the favor of Allah upon all of you. By the way, I will share with you something. You know, in the Arab world, there is a tradition that when two Arab brothers start fighting, a third one will come in the middle and say, Salli ala nabi. Salli ala nabi. Meaning, say salams to the Prophet Based upon this ayah, that it was the Prophet who brought the Arabs together. This, this has been a tradition of the Arabs for a long time. But anyway, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعَدَاءً When you were enemies of one another, killing one another, and I can't go into, you know, killing one another over whose horse is going to drink water first, for example. أَعَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And you found your hearts becoming friends of one, inclined towards one another. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And you found by his blessings that you have now become because of the Qur'an, because holding on to this Qur'an. Why? Because Musa bin Umair, his method of da'wah, his method of da'wah was خِلَالُ Quran through the Qur'an. He was always teaching Qur'an. So وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانًا And you found a favor from Allah, a blessing from Allah, that you became like one big brotherhood. You became a brotherhood because of this Qur'an. And those people amongst the Aws and Khazraj who were fighting one another, now because of their listening and teach, understanding the Qur'an, understanding the concepts in Qur'an, and not only that, but the Qur'an was taught so much, it was kind of hammered into their personalities, you can say. And you were on the brink of the hellfire. Now, this is not something we can appreciate, but that person, that non-Muslim, who remembers, I used to drink alcohol, I used to do, treat women this way, and I used to do this, and I used to do that, and now he remembers, oh, subhanAllah, now I live a totally different life. I live a totally different life than what I was. And the Arabs of that time who would fight over anything, <coughs> right? That I, have, I have transformed myself from being that barbaric human being to this uh, nice, kind human being. That, that transformation they knew about themselves. They understood that about themselves. So Allah says, وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَىٰ خُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from the brink of the fire. And then Allah says, look, look at this. Because Allah is not just telling us this for the companions to reflect upon. But Allah is telling us this for also us. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ Allah says, this is how I'm explaining to you my signs. Look at what happens. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ So that you will be guided. So how will we be guided? We will be guided by focusing on وَاَتَّصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا By focusing on that Qur'an, having a relationship with Qur'an. And then you will find even a community that completely hates itself, hates uh, one another in it. Like the Aws and Khazraj hated one another. 
you will find that you will become a community that has become like a brotherhood. And then will be flourishing and, nur and, and nurtured through the Quran and it will grow. And so, again, let me just repeat this and then I'll go to the third point agenda. So the first point was, have taqwa of Allah. Second is, look at what happens when you became close to the book of Allah. As a result, not just individual transformation, but a social transformation that took place. The social change that took place. And the third point agenda I will mention, inshallah, in the second khutbah. But before I start the second khutbah, let me translate what has been said so far, so that there will be, it will be clear in your minds. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you people, O you people who believe, and one translation can also be one of all oh, you who claim to believe. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi. Have taqwa of Allah. And how do you have taqwa of Allah? You have to realize how great He is. One of the problems, and I guess I can spend two minutes on this, but shouldn't spend too much time. One of the problems is that in the modern times, we feel like we've conquered everything, right? So when somebody 500 years ago used to look at space, it was unconquered territory. There were unknown horizons. It was unlimited, the space. But today we have this feeling that, you know, we know it all. We know the space. Been there, done that. And this is uh, one of the problems that a modern mind has to confront and actually come to its knees when it understands that we know very little about the universe. In fact, the opposite reaction takes place when you properly understand the situation that we're in. Anyway, having said that, Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi O you people who believe, have taqwa of Allah as you should. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except you have surrendered yourself to Allah. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to the rope of Allah, meaning the Qur'an. Hold on to the Qur'an, jami'an, all of you together. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the favor of Allah upon you. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعَدَاءً Even all of us that are here today from different backgrounds, we wouldn't be brothers, we wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for Islam. Just like the Khawarij, I mean, just like the Aws and the Khazraj wouldn't be sitting together if it wasn't for the Qur'an. So, كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ You were enemies, and then you were, your hearts were combined into one. And one of the great things, by the way, uh, I, I can't go into this, but this is really awesome, if I ever get to talk about this. Do you know when you stand in prayer together, and your hearts are beating? You know what happens over a time when you have pendulum? I'll just give you this very, because I don't have time. If you have many pendulums of a clock in a room, let's say 